So you are welcome again. We are at stage three where we have energy harvesting stage. So the role of a dehydrogenase enzyme is to move a hydrogen atom from one compound onto another compound. So at stage three, we have step six where glycerate hydrate phosphate has got a hydrogen atom at carbon number one. So the hydrogenase enzyme removes the hydrogen atom at carbon number one and adds it on, on NAD plus to form NADH. So when an inorganic phosphate interacts with the, the resulting molecule of glyceraldehyde, the three phosphate that has that is less hydrogen atom, the resulting compound will be one three bisphosphoglycerate because it replaces the hydrogen atom. So step number seven is facilitated by phosphoglycerate kinase. The role of a kinase enzyme is to facilitate the transfer of a phosphate group from one compound onto another. So at step number seven, we have phosphoglycerate kinase. So the name phosphoglycerate kinase comes as a result of uh, this particular molecule. So the molecule is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And since the enzyme's function is to move a phosphate group from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate onto ADP to form ATP, it is a kinase. So step seven becomes our first step of um, energy production, where we have formation of two ATPs, because it takes, remember the process takes place in two cycles. So a phosphate group is moved from position one of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate onto ADP to form our ATP. And the resulting compound, therefore, will be 3 phosphoglycerate because it will have one phosphate group at position number three. Position number eight, uh -huh, step number eight is facilitated by mutase enzyme. So the role of a mutase, we say that a mutase is a special isomerase enzyme whose function is to transfer a phosphate group from one position of a compound onto another position of the same compound. So in this case, the amutase enzyme moves a phosphate group from carbon number 3 of 3-phosphoglycerate three to carbon number 2, so that the resulting compound will be 2-phosphoglycerate. So the reason for this is we are moving towards, we are tending towards a more stable molecule that will, will lead to production of our product, which is pyruvate. So, in other words, I mean that 2-phosphoglycerate is more stable a compound compared to 3-phosphoglycerate. Step number 9 is facilitated by enolase enzyme. And enolase enzyme does dehydration reaction. It carries out dehydration reaction whereby it dehydrates this particular molecule between carbon number two and carbon number three so that we have a double bonded uh, compound and a hydrogen atom. It combines a hydrogen atom from position number two and a hydroxyl group to form water molecules. So the resulting compound will be having a double bond between C2 and C3 and the name will be phosphoenol pyruvate, that is PEP. Step 10 is facilitated by pyruvate kinase. And since we've said that the role of a kinase is to move a phosphate group from one compound onto another, so pyruvate kinase transfers a phosphate group from position number two of PEP onto ADP to form our ATP. So this is our second ATP being produced. Since we have our two ATPs, so finally we have our two, our four molecules of ATP because two ATPs are produced at step number nine and two ATPs are also produced at step number seven. So a total of four ATPs are produced. But why do we say that two, two ATPs are produced? It is the net of two ATPs that are produced because step one and step three 
is uh, they are the investment stage. So at this particular step, we invest energy at step number one and step number three. So we have two ATPs that are consumed at step one and step three. And then we have four ATPs that are produced at step number seven and step number 10. And therefore, our net product will be two ATPs uh, produced. Points to note, the role of a kinase enzyme is to facilitate the transfer of a phosphate group from one compound to another. This is uh, seen in step one, three, seven, and 10. Step one, three, Step 1 and step 3 are energy investment stage. Step 7 and 10 are energy consuming uh, producing stage. Then dehydrogenase enzyme facilitates the transfer of a hydrogen atom from one compound onto another. This is uh, seen in step 6 uh, and the process is a redox reaction. Then step 1, 3 and 10 are irreversible. So the rest of the steps are reversible. We shall find out why are they irreversible and the rest are irreversible. Only step seven and 10 produce ATPs. That one we've looked at it. Two water molecules are produced at step nine. Then kinase enzyme reactions are facilitated by enzyme cofactors. Those are manganese ions, magnesium ions, and potassium ions. Then step 10, we say, uh, then the last point to note is that mutase is a special isomerase enzyme whose function is to transfer a phosphate group from one position of a compound onto another position of the same compound.